Let's hack a bank. Right here, we have the fictional bank of Synthes. Normally, I would just enter my account details and then be on my merry way with whatever disappointing numbers it might show me. For those of you who are new to hacking banks, right here on the right, we have the source code for the bank. This is the series of programmatic instructions that get executed when I try to authenticate. Now, normally, this source code isn't available to us, but sometimes it is. Maybe it was leaked, it was stolen. Maybe we used to work at this particular bank. Or maybe we just have a really good intuition for what this code might do. So, let's try to do something interesting. Let's try to authenticate. And actually, because I'm unaccountably wearing this balaclava, I'm gonna try to log on as the administrator, right? So let's try that. Let's try to enter here, admin, mm, try some password link, Ted. Ah, oh, it failed. Failure is something that hackers are particularly good at. In fact, failure just energizes us to keep going, to keep hacking, to try to push the boundary of the system that we're trying to tinker with. And it just increases the bliss that we feel when we ultimately break in. So let's keep at it. So we start to do something, tinker. Let's try something like Ted or hmm, some characters, some not to Ted. Ooh, and what do we notice? What we notice here is that the colors have changed. Ooh, why is that? And that is the second hacker trait, curiosity. It's understanding the limits of the technology that you're trying to hack, to see the boundary of what is possible, to make something do what it was not intended to do. That is hacking, okay? So what happened right here? And I'm sure most of you are familiar with the airline passenger announcement systems, right? You know, the ghost that go, <clears throat> excuse me, um, can't we come to the airline information desk, right? What if you told them that your names would be something like this? What would happen? Um, excuse me, can I have your attention, please? Um, all flights are canceled. All flights are canceled. Please evacuate. Please evacuate. Can't we come to the airline information desk? What just happened? You just injected a command into the airline passenger announcement system, something that was not intended by its operators or by its makers. This is called an injection attack. So what's happening here in our bank is that the back end, the database here, it is not understanding our password as being just Ted or Ted or, it's understanding it to be Ted or, and then an additional command. We've injected something into the protocol. So if we carefully tinker with it, we change it around a little bit, and we start to speak the underlying language called SQL, then we can turn this question that is being asked from being the following question. Is there a user whose username is admin and whose password is Ted? Into the question, is there a user whose username is admin and whose password is Ted? Or does one equal one? Ah. You know, it is the computer's predicament that it must answer logically, right? It's like that math professor. Everybody had like this Vulcan math professor, right? Like the one guy whose wife went like, oh, honey, is it a boy or a girl? Yes, it is boy or girl. <laughs> you know that guy? Yep, computers are the same way, right? So right now, we are telling the computer to say yes, because one equals one. And what happens? Da -da 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 -da, and we type it and, and uh, uh, oh, it's not going to work because we're going to tinker a little bit more. And it's the third pillar of hacking. Devil's in the details. But we've broken in. We can transfer money. We can do whatever we want. We have administrative privileges. Ha <laughs> ha So what happens now? You get a car. And you get a car. Everybody gets a car. It's nice, right? It's good. Yes, yes, yes. Now, before you sent me a mail telling me something to the order of like, 
This is not realistic. This is not how you act, right? Some people with ski masks in the audience, maybe. Allow me to retort first. Is illustrative. And who cares? <laughs> but let me also explain to you why I am here. I want you to become a hacker. Yes. This is not some elaborate sting operation. There's no SWAT team waiting on the roof. Bravo team aboard. <laughs> I really want you to become a hacker. Now, why do I want that? Like, I imagine most of you, I lament the barrage of cybersecurity news. Like, whether it's states attacking other states or big criminal syndicates that are encrypting your photos for ransom or under-socialized boys or doxing celebrities. I also resent the fact that most cyber attacks we will never hear about because they were successful. Yeah. So why do I want you to become a hacker? It's not because I want you to impose your moral codes on an incompatible society. It's not because I want you to inflict damage. I want you to become a hacker because I believe it is the only way we can rebuild cybersecurity. I want you to become a hacker because I think not understanding hacking creates a paralyzing fear of cybersecurity and hacking. And you cannot understand defense if you do not understand offense. So rather than be immobilized by this fear of cyber attacks and hacking and all this stuff, let us embrace it. Let's all become hackers. Let's unmask hacking. This is all happening in slow motion, by the way. Yeah, so. And why, why would anyone wear this, right? Why they're coding? Seriously? If you look up a hacker on the internet, everybody's wearing these masks. Why on earth, right? For a while they're giving a talk, I don't know. Anyway, so when I was a teenager, I was in this hacker team. I don't know if you've tried to visualize what that looks like, but that's a bunch of under-socialized boys that are hacking each other, right? There's like a rivalry going on. We were motivated not by malice, but by curiosity. And what we discovered pretty early on was that there were these big hacker teams, the sophisticated hackers. What they would do was, would be to try to break into the computes of the smaller hackers and use those machines as a launch pad for their own operations. Why? Because if something got traced back, it would be to the small fry hacker who had no plausible deniability. The computer is full of hacking software. Yes, the underground can be insidious. So to escape this fate, it became my group's manifesto to try to hack other hackers, to try to be ahead of the curve. And so that's what we did. And we were insanely successful at it. We would break into other hackers, collect all the cyber weapons, all the exploit codes and so forth, and just have an arsenal for ourselves. We felt completely justified in everything that we did because we had a manifesto, right? With this group identity that we had assumed. It was much later that we realized eh, a little bit about the boundary of what we should have been doing. Anyway, there's something intoxicating about power, it's something seductive, something tantalizing. And it's a little bit hard to explain, but let me, let me illustrate maybe with a story. There was this one night, I remember really well, I was sitting in front of my computer in my bedroom, because that's where hacking happens, and I was staring at my screen, and in front of me was this attack code, this exploit, against the service called Secure Shell, which was used by every system administrator on the planet to get remote access to the networks. It was the keys to the kingdom. I could walk into any door on the internet with this code. Nobody knew I had it. Nobody knew it existed. Nobody had patched against it. And I remember being dumbfounded as I looked at this code in front of me, and I had three thoughts on mine. I was like, wow. There's no challenge anymore. Like, this is it. This is the one ring to rule them all. I don't need any more exploits. 
And the second thought was, whoa, this is so much power. I can break in anywhere. I can change anything that has a digital representation. I could get back at my bullies. Oh, I could delete people. Oh, hmm. I could, I could get a job. <laughs> Maybe I don't even need a job. I could just hack a bank like you guys. I can change history. The third thought at that night was like, whoa, it's 4 a.m. School starts in three hours. <laughs> I was just a kid facing that dilemma. What would you do if you had that one chance in a lifetime to change history, to alter its course? Would you seize it? Would you let it slip? What would you do? They say that fortune favors the bold. Fortune favors the bold. You know what? I think that's bollocks. I think that history favors telling us accounts of those whose boldness generated fortune, and it ignores those where it did not. Faced with this dilemma, of having this incredible chance, once in a lifetime chance, to change history, to alter its course, to impose my will on it. What did I do? I quit. I stopped hacking. I left the scene. And I watched from the sidelines as many of my friends made the opposite choice. And they seized this ring of power and they were chasing this corrosive spiral, this mirage of wealth and power. Ultimately, Winding up with neither. Some went up in prison. Some are still in prison. Some even took their own lives. It was sad to watch. I was simply lucky. And I watched as cybercrime became the fastest growing industry. It's faster than Bitcoin. That's why Bitcoin is big. It became the fastest growing industry. I felt this tremendous guilt about what I had done as my moral compass developed. And I started thinking to myself, I've had this privileged position of being, of having an understanding of the underground, of knowing how it works, knowing how it all fits together. And I also felt a lot of guilt over what I had done. And I just asked myself, what can I do to make the world safer. And what we observed was that people kept repeating the same mistakes because people don't understand hacking. You see, in the cycle of developers making mistakes and then hackers exploiting those mistakes and then us learning from that experience and patching those types of problems. We weren't learning. We've had an abject failure of cybersecurity education. 15 years ago, that injection attack that I showed you for the bank, that was all the rage. 15 years ago, it's like 200 years in cyberspace. Last year, one in five security vulnerabilities identified were injection attacks. One in five were not learning. Part of the issue is that it's also an opaque definition. What is cybersecurity, really? If you break down the word, what does it mean, right? It's, you could define it as the absence of vulnerability. But that doesn't make any sense unless you know what a vulnerability is. It's a negative definition. It's defined by what is not, right? I mean, imagine this. Um, if I asked yourself, how would you defend your organization? How would you impose security controls at your organization? Where does your mind go? It may go down to, uh, um, I would just buy this uh, security solution from Snake All Enterprises. Right? But what if I asked you instead, 
how would you break into your own organization? Where does your mind go now? Does it go, oh, I could uh, talk to crawl through the window, or hmm, I could try to send a fake letter from the IRS? That is you enumerating vulnerabilities. That is the hacker mindset. That is all I want you to take away from this, from this talk, is the hacker mindset. I've spent a big chunk of my career just trying to communicate this idea, this mindset. I've founded companies, I've given talks, I've hosted hacking competitions, I've um, developed various types of materials. You even have a startup like the one I showed you, Adversary, where you can just take the seat of the hacker and try to break into a bank so you can understand what goes wrong, just to try to embrace that mindset. Because I think that security is at a critical junction right now where we must make changes to make the world better. Five years ago, I stood on this very stage and I explained why I teach people how to hire. But today, I implore you to learn it. Today, I want you to make the world safer by becoming a hacker. Thank you very much.